I've been looking for you for like two days now. <laughs> I'm sure this is the one that we've been seeing all the tracks all around, moving around the dam and then going all the way up to Buffalzerk and then coming all the way down. Hey, happy to see you. Let's see if you're that mystery giraffe that's missing one eye. Mm, no, you seem to be fine, at least from this side. But it seems like it's got an oxpecker close to his eye, actually. Yep, oxpecker it is. Too bad we've already counted the oxpecker, the red-billed oxpecker. Hello. <laughs> Going all the way down. I wonder what it is today, because it's the giraffe is also... Oh no, you're not feeding on a buffalo thorn. I thought you were, but you're just eating an acacia, like a very good giraffe, are you not? So I think we saw this guy a few days ago. I recognize it by that marking that you're seeing there. And sometimes, well, it's scars, and when the, the tissue starts scabbing, it becomes itchy, and they carry on scratching it, and that's how they get those scars over there but sometimes there's also a type of fly that la it lays its eggs inside of the hair follicles of the giraffe so when the larva comes out it actually starts feeding on the hair itself and it becomes quite itchy for the giraffe so because they scratch it so much then they tend to they tend to peel all that hair away and then little creatures like those naughty ox peckers on top of the giraffe will definitely if there's a bit of blood exposed they'll come around and they'll you know start pecking on the wounds or you know just opening it up a bit more and hurting the giraffe well not hurting the giraffe that's a bit strong but just not letting the wound heal in time Sylvia, you're saying that the oxpecker looks very tiny on the giraffe. Uh, yeah, I think so. They're not big birds in general, but probably anything on top of a giraffe would look very small. I reckon even I on top of the giraffe would look small. That would be quite quite a view. Imagine if you could ride giraffes, what the view would be from all the way up there. Well, at least one of the bigger creatures around here has decided to come and join us at the dam. See, it's three days looking for it. We should have just, like the beginning, let it come to us. <laughs> it would have been a lot easier because it's here now. I also think it's balancing on some very interesting ground. So I hope that it's eventually going to make its way all the way down to the water hole and we'll be able to see it have a bit of a drink. Because I think that is one of my favorite things, just the way that they have to stretch and go very slowly and then when they're done drinking bloop, they almost like jump back up because otherwise it would be too awkward for them so quite a pleasant afternoon around Weyatilla Dam hey giraffe somebody's enjoying the occasion Now what's interesting about the tree that this giraffe is feeding upon is the fact that the, it's going to start putting because it's going to start putting out a substance on the in the leaves that's called tanning that it's going to make the leaves sta uh, taste very bitter and then the giraffe is going to get tired of feeding on this particular tree because it's not going to taste as yummy and then it's going to move on onto the next tree. But what is quite interesting is not only will they put out this substance in their leaves, but then they're going to put out a pheromone, a substance that all of the other acacias of the same species around, that they're going to recognize it as an alarm, that there's danger, that there's a creature that's feeding upon them, and they will automatically start putting out the same substance just to deter the giraffe from coming and feeding on them. Um, Lily, you are seven and you are wondering what's the tallest giraffe I have ever seen? Ooh, I don't know. I think they're all very tall. I think maybe the tallest one that I have ever seen was one that was a very old big bull and it was very dark in color. And I think that was definitely the biggest one that I have seen. And, I, and it had a very big neck and I don't know, it looked like a building to me every time we bumped into it. So almost imagine looking up and you see a head and you see the clouds. That ha that's how big I thought it was. I think maybe the leaves are starting to taste less appetizing and that's why the head is going all the way down. 
to try and find because I think there are there's a cluster of trees around there so a few different ones all together and the giraffes is just maneuvering all around them James, you're wondering if some giraffe subspecies are more gregarious than others. Um, I'm not too sure. Normally giraffes have loose uh, associations where they'll bump into each other and they'll spend some time together and then they'll be apart. But uh, I'm not too sure. It'll be interesting to see because also only recently ha have scientists divided giraffes into more subspecies, I think there's an, an extra three or four that they've decided now that they're not part of the bigger group so until they do some specific studies of this particular social adaptation or social inclination of giraffes I, d I don't think i can answer that question i don't know if there there are any studies that have been done just to determine if perhaps the giraffes in the Masai Mara are slightly um, more sociable than the ones down here but it'll be something interesting to go and research when when I get back tonight. Giraffes are such puzzling animals. They just seem to go through life and not worry too much. Just carry on moving around. There's a lion. They'll be able to run away or kick it and defend themselves. They seem to to live very peaceful lives, don't they? Matt, you're wondering what the bump that's found in between the eyes of a giraffe, what it's used for, and that is a very good observation. So when male giraffes fight for mating rights, they will do it with their necks and their horns. So you'll see they do what is called necking. So they don't kick or bite, they'll just use their necks to fight. Now, one of the heaviest things, of course, is their head. And they, as they start getting older, there is more weight added to it and there's more weight added to them so when they fight then the blow is is much harder the heavier the head so they will have the horns and they get calcium deposits in the front and on the back i don't know if you can see in between their ears there are another two bumps at the back of the the horns so they hurt each other and the more um calcium deposits that they have the heavier their head the harder the blow and the better their chance to mate with the female I think Taylor's very excited about a bird that she's with. I wonder what it is that she's managed to find. So let's go across to her and see if she can tick off a new one. <laughs> 